Hey there doll faces, you are with me today in my card slinging corner to talk a little bit about some of the tarot and oracle decks that I find to be really useful for my own work with self love. This is a spontaneous video, I didn't plan to do this for self love September but I just got the bug, I started playing with my decks last night and I was just thinking about how meaningful the use of tarot and oracle has been for me on my self love journey so far and I thought I would love to share some of the main decks that have really made a difference for me, maybe some of them will overlap with some of the decks that you've got in your collection. Maybe you've never even thought about using cards for self-love before and this is all very novel and new, in which case maybe I can give you some tips and ideas on different decks that will help and why I think they've been so helpful for me. Um, if you have not seen this card slinging corner before and you want to know more about it and you would like to know what everything is, then you can click below to my card slingers corner tour and basically in that video I just talk you through what you're seeing here, what's going on with my tarot shells, what's going on with my tarot table, behind me so if you want to have a little tour you can go ahead and do that I will leave the link below for you so I went through my collection and I had a look at the things that I've definitely done self-love related work with and the things that usually call to me when I'm struggling with self-love or I'm going through some kind of challenge in the self-love area of things and I came up with four tarot decks and three oracle decks that I want to talk to you guys about today so I'm going to begin with the first of the four tarot decks um, and that is the joie de vivre tarot the joie de vivre is a really adorable tarot deck by Paulina Cassidy. I'm going to show you some cutaways here so you can have a look at some of the cards in this deck. You could say that it's whimsical. There are lots of really funny and fun, light-hearted, fantastical characters in this deck. Uh, it's got a very kind of like fantasy, Alice in Wonderland kind of vibe to it. It is very friendly to look at and work with. It's got a really nice vibe to it. The reason that I really rate Joie de Vivre for self-love work is that sometimes when I'm looking to a deck to work on self-love related issues, I might be feeling a bit vulnerable. I might be experiencing a state of insecurity. I might be feeling really low, really just kind of down, very downhearted in a very low mood. So the Joie de Vivre Tarot does a couple of things for me really well. First of all, it really does perk me up quite a lot. I find that my inner child is really amused by the characters in the deck. I feel instantly a little bit more lifted or light-hearted just looking at these characters and the situations and the surroundings. It's just very happy, very high vibe. So my inner child is satiated by the imagery. I really think the illustration kind of speaks to me and it elevates my mood. But the other thing that is really great about Joie de Vivre is that it really is gentle with its answers and it's gentle with its advice and its instruction. So if I feel like I'm in a vulnerable place where I might be kind of wary of more hard hitting decks that will go in there with maybe some quite tough loving criticism, Joie de Vivre is like someone holding your hand. That's the kind of energy that it's got. That's the kind of vibe that it gives to me. I definitely do think that there is a place for hard hitting, tough loving decks when you're doing self-love work I would never say otherwise I would never say that we shouldn't use those kinds of decks and I would never say that they've never been useful to me but sometimes I'm just feeling fragile and I'm, I'm feeling like I'm in a bit of a state and I kind of want a deck that feels like it's holding my hand it's including my inner child into the proceedings it feels friendly um, it feels warm it feels like an accepting world full of characters that I want to cuddle up to or that I would get on with or that could give me advice in a way that was non-threatening and kind of not intimidating. I don't know if this sounds really abstract and really weird. Um, for some people it's going to make loads of sense what I'm talking about and other people are going to be like, what do you mean? Are you actually talking to the characters when you do readings? I'm not talking to the characters, full disclosure. I'm just doing a reading for myself based on, you know, some challenges I'm having with self-love or some things I want to bring in. Um, but really what I'm talking about is the energy. I'm talking about the essence of Joie de Vivre as far as decks go. The world is very friendly. It's a very comforting deck. Um, I just feel like the characters are just so adorable and I want to give them a big hug and that makes me feel like I'm getting a big hug. The next deck that I want to mention is the first of the three oracle decks that I've included in this video and it is the Psychic Tarot for the Heart by John Holland. I absolutely love this oracle deck. I started off with the Psychic Tarot by John Holland and then I was really intrigued a year or two later by the Psychic Tarot for the Heart and I had to go ahead and get that too. I really do feel like the title of this deck is a big mistake and I think that with Psychic Tarot as well. This is not a tarot deck, this is an oracle deck. Um, this has little to nothing to do with tarot. You can see how they've made 
leaps and, and sort of taken tarot as a jumping off point but I don't think of this as having anywhere near the kind of energy that would constitute it being a tarot deck in any way it is an oracle deck plain and simple and it shouldn't really have the word tarot in the title at all that being said there is something about the energy of this deck and the way that it reads which is astounding for self-love work it is really comforting very high vibe um, very illuminating it's challenging in just the right way for when you're doing self-love work it doesn't skip over the shadow content which i really enjoy it seems to always come out with the right cards at the right time and that's why it's also a very firm favorite for me when it comes to doing readings for clients as well uh, this is an oracle deck that i will often pluck out and work with it still gets a lot of love even though it's one of the older ones in my collection it's never too far to the back of my tarot shelves i really really love it it just always seems to come out with the right thing at the right time that's pretty much what i can say about it and even though i'm not really super gripped by a lot of the illustrations and it's certainly not a style that i feel is you know really really calling to me or really speaking to my heart it's the messages and the names of the cards and the way that those cards always seem to come together to provide something fresh for me to focus on. During times where I'm having challenges with self-love, I really feel like this deck gives me something. Um, it transports me. Like I said, it does challenge me to an extent. It's definitely not like a great big hug in a mug type vibe. Um, it definitely does ask me to look at things that I might be avoiding, which is great. But it does do so in a very loving way, in a very compassionate way. There is something very compassionate and very kind of gentle about this particular deck so this is a firm favorite for me as far as oracle decks go i think if i was on a desert island and i had to take one oracle deck with me psychic tarot oracle for the heart would be a very strong contender anyway um, but for self-love work it would be the absolute must it is definitely my top oracle deck for self-love work so the next deck that I'm going to mention might be a little bit of a surprise for you guys, but it is actually the Mary L Tarot. I have decanted this into a bag. The box is actually right here, but it's very cumbersome and very big, so I switched it into a velvet bag. Uh, I do not use Mary L Tarot for clients yet. It's a, a deck that actually sort of organically came to be, one that I just use for myself, for my personal work. I have been bonding with it over time since I um, first got my hands on it and you can take a look at the unboxing and first impressions of the Mary L tarot deck I will leave the link down below to that particular video on my channel if you want to have a look at what my first impressions were um, Mary L tarot really asks you to dive very deeply and it gives you a lot of mythological and um, archetypal content to work with in order to do that so even though it plunges you very deeply into the challenges that you're having on your self-love journey I feel like it doesn't do that in a cold unfeeling way it gives you a lot of material to delve into and it makes you feel very enriched by the time you're done um, doing a reading with it or doing a meditation with it or whatever the case may be so it definitely feels like it's giving me a lot I also feel like there's something about Mary L Tarot which is very representative of who I am and it's kind of reflective of a lot of the key energies that are present in my nature and obviously when it comes to self-love work it does help if you've got one or two key decks that you would consider to be decks that represent who you are that represent your personality that represent your likes and dislikes and um, that seem to include shards of your soul amongst the cards because then you're really connecting with the essence of you and obviously that's a very self-loving self-accepting thing to do i did have a very strong emotional response to mary l tarot when i first opened it and you can see that in the unboxing and first impressions video that emotional response grew over time i think i always knew as soon as i first started playing with this deck that it was going to be one that would be reflective of some of the rooms in my psyche that i wanted to have a better understanding of and that i wanted to kind of walk into a bit more and acquaint myself with more so mary l tarot has been very much about self-discovery and very much about extending more love to myself and more compassion to myself and more understanding to myself as well I would say. The next deck that's been really useful for me in my self-love work is the Wisdom Keepers Oracle. This is a really interesting, really different um, Oracle deck and I know that those people who have gotten along with it, who really enjoy it, are die-hard fans of it. Like the way that they rave about it. You know when you get those particular decks that you can either work with and get along with or you really can't and the people that can't just sell it on because they don't even want it in their collection and the people that do just 
bond over it you know like the way they talk about it is like they are sort of verbally gushing over it like they just love it so much and I definitely feel like I'm in that latter camp when it comes to the Wisdom Keepers Oracle it is just really deep I love the fact that you are looking so intimately and closely into all of these different faces and you're seeing all of these different aspects of the different faces it's like you can see the characteristics and the souls of the different characters etched onto the faces you can have a look almost at the timeline and the life journey of each individual character and then the words that go along with the different faces really give you a lot to think about and they allow me to really connect with what I want to bring through in my nature and what parts of me are really beautiful and really worth celebrating and really worth bringing to the surface more. So I definitely feel like for me Wisdom Keepers Oracle is one of those decks that asks me to examine myself and enjoy what I see there. So I'm looking at all of these different faces and all of these different patterns and decorations and features and symbols balls and I'm kind of starting to think, you know, what would be on my face? What kinds of things would be etched into my skin? Uh, what kinds of things would symbolize what I've been through, where I'm going? what I'm afraid of, what I desire in life. And it's really, I suppose, about self-intrigue and a healthy degree of self-involvement, which is important if you are doing work around challenges to do with self-love, obviously, and self-acceptance. So the Wisdom Keepers Oracle is amazing because by looking into all of these different faces and seeing all of these different symbols, you end up at this point of thinking of yourself as one of the cards in the deck. And really it's about deep self-examination and analysis of your own actions and your your own behaviours but in a loving way which is more to do with curiosity than it is to do with scrutiny or criticism at least that's what I find anyway I love the back of these cards that is one of the most beautiful backings for a deck that I own I think I love that dragonfly key kind of vibe it's it's just it really does it for me so now I'm moving on to the next tarot deck that I like to use for self-love work and this is the mythic tarot um, it's the original 1986 publication of the mythic tarot not the new mythic tarot which I actually don't like I much prefer the 1986 version so the cards in the mythic tarot deck are all based on the Greek myths and when you go through the guidebook of the mythic tarot you really are given so much detail and so much information about each of the myths that is represented in each of these 78 cards it really is an incredible journey and this is really the first deck that I got my hands on as a child so I got the Marseille when I was very young like 11 or 12 um, possibly slightly younger but I feel like it was 11 or 12 um, something like that uh, but I never read with it I never learned with it really I just played with it I shuffled it I got used to the feeling of it but I never really sort of delved in with the Marseille tarot I would like to purchase a copy again now I must say because I really do enjoy it now it's a really beautiful traditional deck but at the time I was way too young to learn with a deck like that and then I was given the mythic tarot when I was about 14 or 15 by an auntie of mine who was getting rid of it in a boot sale and wondered if I might want it instead and it was destiny it was fate a hundred percent and it really made me dive so deeply into the world of tarot. It gave me um, that incredible launch pad that I needed to go into the cards so much more deeply. I think the love affair that I had with tarot as a tool became conscious at that point. So with the Marseille tarot, it was more like I was attracted to the tool. I was playing with it. I obviously knew that it had some special significance, but I wasn't switched on to the fact that it was really going to be important for me yet. And then when I got the mythic tarot as a teenager, that was when it really became clear to me that this is a really important deck and it's going to be um, something that's going to mean something to me in my life. I never knew how much it would mean, um, but it meant so much. So as you can imagine, working with the Mythic Tarot for my self-love challenges, things to do with self-acceptance and identity and embracing myself fully makes perfect sense with the Mythic Tarot because it's so much a part of my personal history. It's so much a part of the way that my identity was forged, not only when it came to tarot but when it came to a bunch of other things so even though it's been strange getting into playing with this deck again and revisiting it from this new place in my life and certainly there have been some of the uncomfortable vibes of nostalgia that come up when you reacquaint yourself with a deck that you worked with a very long time ago it also is incredibly meaningful and potent for me to have my hands on this deck again and this was very kindly sent to me by a subscriber the 1986 version of this 
deck does normally go for a reasonably hefty price now so the fact that this was just sent to me for free because a subscriber wanted to say thank you to me for my videos meant the world um, and yeah reacquainting with it I have found that it has been particularly useful and pertinent and profound for self-love work for obvious reasons it's just so much a part of my history. The final oracle deck that I'm going to mention that's been quite good for self-love work is Crazy Sexy Love Notes by Chris Carr. I fell in love with this one after seeing a few of the images on social media and trying to shrug off the idea of purchasing it and then eventually just being like no I really actually want that deck it looks really gorgeous there's a few images in it that I keep seeing that just keep speaking to me and calling to me so I want to get it and I'm really glad that I did get it I very very rarely use it for client readings it's much more for my own work again it's got that kind of warm snuggly hug vibe that the joie de vivre tarot has it's very friendly this deck it just gives you a very friendly energy and of course the illustrations are very high vibe and they do make you think and they do allow you to contemplate and to reflect and to be meditative but they also are fun in a lot of cases they are funny they make you laugh so they're quite a good mood elevator if you're feeling really shitty uh, they make you feel as though you're being guided they make you feel as though your hand is being held I also really like the fact that there is a message on the back of every single card so you've got the illustration on the one side with the key statement or the key word but then on the back you've got a passage which is really friendly, really kind, very sweet, very sort of empathetic and compassionate and it encourages you know empowerment and forgiveness and self-love and self-acceptance the words are very much part of the reason that I keep returning back to this deck. It's great to be able to turn it over and just read the message aloud and feel as though you have been accompanied and you have been given guidance of some kind by, by an outside force, which is very often what it feels like to play with cards, especially when you're going through self-love challenges and you reach out for something. You want that input, you want that sense of interaction with the deck and obviously the passages on the back of these cards give you a very good, strong sense of that. The final deck that I like to use for my self-love work might be a complete surprise or it might be one that's completely obvious I don't know drum roll please if you haven't guessed it yet if you've been around on my channel for any length of time you probably have guessed it it's the Rider Waite Smith Tarot which I always keep in this bag um, this is the deck that I've had since my uh, mid-20s so it's very grey on the sides now in comparison to the Rider Waite Smith deck that I use on my altar which is bright white along the sides which has had a lot less wear this deck has seen some fucking times and a little bit like the Mythic Tarot uh, where I mentioned that it's kind of like a nostalgia thing and an identity thing. It, it's a lot to do with that with the Rider Waite Smith Tarot as well, I must say. This one is the Rider Waite Smith Original rather than the Rider Waite Smith Universal. Uh, the colours are just a little bit brighter, I think, in the original. I don't know if there's a difference in the border. I think they both do have the same sort of thin white border. Um, but just in case you're wondering, this is the original rather than the Universal. I know there's a few different incarnations um, of the Rider Waite Smith. I've got the original one um, I really uh, love working with this deck because I'm so used to it it is so familiar to me it is what has been my go-to foundation deck for so many years now that it really doesn't allow me to sidestep the issues that I'm dealing with or to bullshit myself so it is very it's very firm but fair basically I feel like it's giving me a cuddle because it's so familiar to me and it's my foundation deck it's my favorite traditional deck it's the one that I return to time and time again it's the one I feel most comfortable with in terms of traditional decks but it definitely is also um, sort of taking me to task and asking me to examine things it calls me on my BS and it gives very straight answers to very straight questions which means that it can be a very useful deck for me for bridging that gap between self-love work and shadow work as well so that might be something that you want to think about too you might want to think about what kind of deck is familiar to you what kind of deck in your collection if you do collect decks has that sense of familiarity and that sense of being a staple in your collection you might want to think about a deck that you can incorporate both self-love and shadow work together because you've got that warmth and that familiarity of the deck whilst at the same time having that sense that it is going to call you on your shit and it is definitely going to speak to you clearly and you're not going to be able to sidestep the issues so that's one of the main reasons I love working with my Rider Waite Smith original 
um, it's just been with me such a long time I get such a good feeling from holding this deck and obviously if you're about to make yourself really vulnerable and do some self-love exploration or focus on challenges that you are having with self-love what better than to grab hold of a deck that feels like second nature in your hands and just feels like a an extra appendage it just feels like a part of your body what could be better than that when you're about to get really grimy and you're about to get up to your neck in mud in the psyche it's good sometimes to just have that old favorite that feels like an old friend so these have been my picks for my tarot and oracle decks that i find are really good for self-love work if you want to um, have another video from me where i talk more about how you can use tarot and oracle for self-love please let me know down below and if there seems to be a strong vote on that then that's something i'll definitely look into filming in the next couple of months um, i'm definitely going to be talking more about specific decks that i enjoy for specific things it's something that's been coming up in my mind more and more lately that i want to do i was thinking about how i want to show you guys the decks that i prefer for traveling so i'm definitely going to be showing you my top five travel decks that i like to take with me when i go away i want to talk about decks for shadow work decks for inner child work decks for relationship readings uh, my collection is not super super sizable there's definitely a lot of pro readers that have a shit ton more decks than I do. Um, I'm collecting very, very slowly. I've come a long way from where I was when I first started the channel when I literally only read with Rider Waite Smith. Um, so I've come a, a bit further now, um, but definitely it's been slow and steady and I have a lot less decks compared to the average pro reader, but I'm adding to my deck collection all the time. And I definitely have some more sort of like sturdy opinions now about what I like to use, why I like to use it, what feels good, um, and what didn't work out so so well too for different kinds of readings and stuff so I definitely want to talk more about sort of top fives or top decks that I like for different things please let me know down below in the comments what you would like to know um, in terms of my top decks for different things I would love to know if you have any ideas and I'll definitely take them under advisement so so much love and self-love blessed be